So I'm going to start by graphing a line, 2x plus 1. No problem graphing that line. You know from graphing lines that that has a y-intercept of 1. And the slope of 2 means you could go up 2 over 1. And that point 1, comma 2 would be on that line. No problem. What we're looking at in this chapter is what happens when we add negatives to our graph. And what happens to our equation if we add negatives in different places? So we've talked about things inside and things outside. So we'll start with what would it look like to ha have a negative inside the function? So I'm going to just, in function notation, inside the function would be a negative right there. Does that make sense? And so what would happen to this exact same line? So I'm going to write this exact same line. If I replace the x with a negative x, that would look like this. Now with lines, if you were asked to graph this, you know how to graph lines. You would simplify, right? And if you simplified this, you would have y equals negative 2x plus 1. And then you would use your strategies for graphing lines just like before. You would say, oh, I know that my y-intercept is 1, and go down 2 over 1 because I have a slope of negative 2 this time. And this is my new graph. Now, a couple things I want you to notice with this graph, because what we're going to find is with negatives, negatives make reflections. You probably saw that with parabolas, right? An x-squared parabola opens up, a negative x-squared parabola opened down. In fact, it reflected over the x-axis. So now we're looking at what happens if I put that negative with the x, and I drew a line. Can you see that one line is a reflection of the other line? In fact, it's reflected over the y-axis. So if this point went directly over the y-axis, what should the coordinates be here? The y-coordinate is still going to be 2. That's an important thing to notice. But my x-coordinate gets changed to a negative 1. Quick check by plugging negative 1 into this equation. We see that 2 plus 1 is 3. Oh, I labeled everything wrong right from the beginning. Nobody said anything. Right? Is this 1, 2? No. <laughs> there we go. 1, 3. And when I plugged it in and it didn't work, I was like, uh-oh, something is bad. But it is at negative 1, 3. And the idea still holds. It's just been reflected over. We just labeled that first point wrong. So there we have what happens when you have a negative inside. It seems to flip over the y-axis. Next, we're going to look at what happens when we have a negative outside of our function. So a negative outside of our function, in function notation, that could look like that. Does that make sense? Or are those two the same thing? Is y equals negative f of x and negative y equals f of x the same thing? Yes. You could do that by moving them to other sides or divide by negative 1, or multiply by negative 1. But those two things are the same. So with writing my equation, I have a choice. If I wrote it this way, my original equation was 2x plus 1. So I could write the negative with the y, because that would be the same as the right-hand side. If I wrote it like this, the negative is outside the function, now, f of x is our function that we started with. That's the whole thing, 2x plus 1. You see that I have to add bra brackets there because the negative is in front of the whole thing. So here I would have to make the negative in front of the whole thing. Rearranging things, if I multiplied this negative through, I would get negative 2x minus 1. If I multiplied both sides by a negative to make the y positive, I'll get the same thing here, which is important because it should be the same. 
And now that it's simplified, you could go back to graphing y equals mx plus b like you've done before. You would start with your y-intercept. This time is negative 1, a slope of negative 2 down 2 and over 1. With your slope, do you always go one way or the other? Or do you sometimes go both? Like, I could go down 2 and over 1 or up 2 and over 1 that way. Both would work. As long as your line is going down from left to right, because that's what a negative slope does. A positive slope goes up from left to right. So now thinking of this one and our original blue one, are they reflections of each other? Yes. This time it's been reflected down. In the same way that your x squared graph, when you put a negative outside the function in front of that x squared graph, it made your parabola go down. Now part of the reason, so this point now is 1, negative 3. Now part of the reason that you don't learn reflections with lines is because you get so good at y equals mx plus b that that's actually easier than flipping things around. And one of the things, reasons you don't learn reflections with parabolas well, you kind of do. Like, you learn this one, right? You learn that that flips the regular parabola down. But why do you never learn this one? Well, that squaring that negative is going to do what? Make it positive. OK? So this is the graph of negative x squared. and Right on top of it in green, ooh, fancy, that's the graph of x squared. They're the same. So if a teacher was trying to, oh, look at the reflection, you'd be like, it just looks the same to me. It doesn't actually look like a reflection. But in fact, can you see that a parabola, if you flip it over the y, it stays the same? Because it's symmetrical. That's why you have, anybody know the name of this line in between on a parabola? Axis of symmetry. Whew. Good. I was going to give you a hint. I was going to tell you it rhymes with praxis of timetry. But uh, you got it before that. Excellent. So what I'd like you to do is turn to page 180, and we're going to, you have some space right beside this orange box, like on the left-hand side, there's a column. So we're going to just write a few little notes in that space. So our first note we're going to write this and we're going to say if the negative If the negative is with the x value, in other words, inside the function, then all your x values will be multiplied by negative 1. And the graph will flip over the y-axis. So we saw that with the first graph that we looked at, that if the negative is inside, all of your x values get multiplied by negative 1, your y values don't change. And this is the theme so far that we saw with the values translating inside the function affected the x values. Outside of the function affects the y values. So the same thing happens with a negative. If it's inside the function, it affects the x values. And 
if you had the negative outside the function, so So if it's outside the function, then the y values will be multiplied by negative 1. And the graph will flip over the x-axis. So if you try to memorize this directly, you will find that you will easily mix these two things up because they look very similar. Oh, there's a negative here, there's a negative there, so I have a negative sign. And they both do similar things. One flips over one way, one flips over the other way. So how do I remember which one does which is I think about a specific point. Oh, wait a second. Looks like some people are still writing. But, so we're going to go back to those lines, and we're going to think about specific points. And we're going to think about what would happen to those specific points. It's easy to see the inside affecting the x and the outside affecting the y, because that's been common throughout everything. So if we go back to our line, and we have our original line, and I have that original point labeled correctly now, 1, 3. If I think about inside the function, if I think about 1, 3, and I think about changing my x coordinate by multiplying it by a negative 1, I get negative 1, 3. And if I think about that point, 1, 3 going to negative 1, 3, can you see that that goes over the y-axis? And so uh, that helps me remember which flip it's going to be. Because if I just try to memorize it directly, they're too similar, and when things are too similar, that's when you mix things up. But if you think about what's happening and why it's happening, you're going to remember that better. Look at our black graph. If the y coordinate is getting multiplied by a negative 1, 1, 3 goes to 1, negative 3. And if we think back to the beginning with the black graph, that would make that point go down to there. So if you imagine a point and changing the y value to a negative, you're going to remember that that flips over the x-axis.